Okay, everything is coming down to this one investment. Whether you live in the US or you live in Europe or you live in Asia, this one investment is affecting everyone's portfolio. So we have to talk about it today because it did it last time too. And I'll let you know what that means. All right, stick around. Hey everyone, this is my weekly video where I talk about what I think is most important with the markets. Now, here's the thing. That's just this week, right? So I look at what's going on this week, but then you have to kind of zoom out and look at what's going on for the whole year, half decade, decade, because you don't want to be making life adjustments to your retirement portfolio based on just what happened today or this week. And if you are, we believe that's a problem. So let's jump into what I wanted to talk about. I have four, I had to look at how many charts I have. I have four charts that I want to show you. And there's one culprit that's really messing with the market today and really the past probably three years. So let's pop over to, let's pop over to the chart. Now, the first chart I want to show you is the US dollar. And this is the investment that is messing with everything else. It hasn't always been this way, right? It, the US dollar really didn't mess with the dot-com crash. The dollar fell, the yen fell when, the, when stocks around the world fell in 2000. So this is not an always, and there's rare always or nevers in the investment world and anywhere in life. But what's happening today? So what's happening today is the whole investment world is looking at the dollar. Now, there's a couple of points uh, I just want to show you on here. Let me find my cursor here. So that is, that blue horizontal line is kind of the peak of pain for the uh, COVID crash, which happened right here. That's the COVID crash right there. Let me just get rid of this, get rid of some squiggly lines to make this easier. So you have the COVID crash there and the dollar absolutely spiked, right? So that's what you see there. Okay, and so the dollar is kind of back to the scene of the crime and trying to figure out if it should go back up. Everything started to change when the dollar stopped going up. Let's call it, it was really September 27th, but if we just say, you know, October 1st, end of September, it's fine. And the dollar is in the driver's seat right now. So let me show you what I mean. If you look at the different parts of the world, we have US, Europe, emerging market, and all world ex-US. So we kind of have the whole globe on this price chart. And this price chart starts on September 26th. So the day before the dollar peaked and then really had its hard fall. So look, stock markets are up all over the globe. The one that's up the least is the S&P 500, which is up only about 12%. The one that's up the most is Europe, which is up almost 40%. In fact, it was up 40% last week. Uh, but what we're seeing is the equity markets really responding to what the dollar is doing. And as the dollar strengthens, the whole world's kind of like, is it, is it going back up? So the, the kind of the, the global equity markets looking at the dollar. And part of me telling this to you and showing this to you is so you, you can kind of be like, oh, that's what's going on, right? It doesn't mean you change your portfolio approach, right? So when someone wants to retire strong, looking at a daily price chart or thinking about what's going on, or if they're burdened with what's going on on a daily basis, we think that's a big problem because that means they don't actually have a portfolio that has them to retire strong. Now, look at this price chart right here. So on the top of it is the S&P 500. On the bottom of the screen is the US dollar. So it's just, just some general math here. Let me get my cursor out. So the dollar peaks and falls. Now, during that time period, the S&P went up about 80%. And then you have the dollar zoom higher. So I'm looking at the bottom price chart. The bottom price chart is the US dollar, and it moves from 90 to 114. During that time period, the S&P fell about 13% plus or minus, right? So dollar crashing, market soars. Now, yes, it did happen just after the COVID crash, but I see that as very similar here with the peak of the dollar on the 27th of September, where 
the dollars, you know, fell very hard here. And now that the dollars kind of perked up in the last week or so, markets all over the globe are really struggling, right? So this is kind of like the, oh, that's what's going on. The other thing I talked about last week, I said most of the world is just in a sideways channel of messiness. And I believe that's going to create as much pain as possibly, uh, maybe in many ways, as much pain as the global financial crisis of 08 or the dot-com of 2000, because a sideways market is very dangerous. But the dollar is really in control right now. And it just appears that all markets are just absolutely focused on the U.S. dollar. Here's the global financial crisis, which the stock market peaked in October of 07. And if you're looking at this and not just listening to it, you almost would think the two charts are just, it's the same chart, but with a mirror. The bottom price chart is the US dollar. When the US dollar started cranking higher, it really started moving higher from, call it, May of 08, and it peaked at the beginning of March in the following year. And it absolutely cranked higher. During the same time period, the stock market fell. And stock market fell during that same time period, 50%. And then the dollar absolutely fell from that early of March of 09 and you know moved down. And during that same time period, the stock market moved up about 65%. It doesn't always have to work this way, right? But what, I'm, what I wanna point out to you is probably three things. The dollar is in control right now. And what the doll and what that really means, like let's step back and look at what that really means. It means people, when they're worried, right now they're going and they're panicking into the dollar. They're no longer panicking into the yen. They're no longer necessarily panicking into the US bond market or the Japanese bond market, but it's kind of the last safe asset standing right now is what people think is an asset. Uh, is the U.S. dollar, and that's in control. So that's the answering of kind of what's going on, what's kind of driving the mood right now. And then the overarching, this is point number two, the overarching is the market's really, really trying to figure out what to do with interest rates going to five, sorry, the federal funds rate going to five, maybe five and a quarter. That has to reset everything around the globe because if no risk money can make 5%, then... What does your stock have to do, right? What does your individual bond have to do? What do commodities have to do, right? It resets everything, right? And then the third thing is just your approach has to take in this information. But the problem is a lot of people who retire, they're using literally an idea from the 1950s called modern portfolio theory. Now, I just lost about half of you just saying that. But literally, literally, that idea was introduced, let's call it 70 years ago, over 70 years ago. And most people's money is still being invested like we are in the 50s. And that's why they have this syndrome called the 4 to 6% syndrome, right? Which is what's been going on with their portfolio over the last 20 years. That's not really being retired strong. The point is there's a better way. Thanks everyone for being in my world. I appreciate you watching these videos. Let me know where you think I got it right, where you think I got it wrong, uh, what I missed. Again, the big takeaway right now is the dollar is in control, which again means the fear of people is still in control. And there's just these manic moves in the market, mostly because people are covering their shorts. Uh, but that's more very short-term, almost short-term trading. Okay, that's it. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you for watching this, and I will see you next week. All right, bye.